Welcome and hello to this session on performance tuning for sentence embedding with the use of a sentence transformer model based on a BERT model. I received quite a lot of questions from you about pre-trained models. And just to be here on the safe side, give you the reference www.sbert.net. And if you have a question, if you want to find some reference API, if you want to have some information about sentence embedding, this is the source I would recommend you would have a look at. And a lot of the code I'm going to present to you, I found over there and I build up on these code sequences. So step one, pre-trained models, models that are ready to go. I received quite a lot of questions from you about the difference about word embedded models, like for example, the transformer models you find on Hugging Space, or some sentence embedded models, models that are pre trained and you also find on Hugging Space now. And it seems that there is a little bit of confusion when to use which model. And I'm going to show it to you in a very simple example. So if you're a beginner, welcome, this is the right place for you. In addition, if you want to improve your model, of course, you have two options. First, if you have some adequate in-domain training data. This means you have normally two sentences from your specific task. You have a sentence A and a sentence B, and you have a numerical value that tells you this is the semantic similarity of, let's say, 0 0.7 between sentence A and sentence B you can provide this training data to the model and you can train your model on your personal domain specific training data. Or if you're a lazy programmer like I am and you do not want to go to the difficulty of finding some training data, because I can tell you if I have a sentence, this color, no, the sky is blue, sentence A, and the sky is orange, sentence B, I would not know to say, hey, is this true? Are both sentences true? Because sometimes the sky is blue, sometimes the sky is orange. Or if I say no, then I get a little bit of a schizophrenic deep learning artificial intelligence system. And it's not clear on what it is trained on the color of the sky. Is it specific for the time? Is it specific for the date? Is it specific to the cloud situation in the sky? What is trained is not really clear for me. So I do prefer option unsupervised learning here, where I do not provide some training data that I personally deducted from my domain specific knowledge. But I tell the system, hey, I provided you with 10,000 sentences. Now take those 10,000 sentences and do some unsupervised learning on those sentences. And I give you no additional training data. These are the options I would like to tell you today. I would like to show you the code, how to code this sequence. We run through the code. I show you what's working for me. And uh, there's one example that is not working for me. And I think here we start pre trained models, the word embedding models, and the sentence embedding models, the pre trained that are ready and set to go. So we import the transformers, we import the Sentence transformers. We have here the proceedings reference, Ramus 2019 sentence bird. You find here the archive reference. And the first step is, of course, the pre trained models ready to go. And remember, I'm talking here about the sentence embedded modeling models and not the sentence embedding models you can create out of a word embedding model from Hugging Face. You will find both models on Hugging Face now. So I understand a little bit of a confusion, but you know, it is quite simple. No problem at all. So let's start. Two lines of code. We import the sentence transformer and we choose a model from the sentence transformer model library if you want. And it is May 27, 2021. And this is, if you go here, oops to the pre-trained models summary, you will see here that you have here a different, quite a lot of models that have been sentence embedded, pre-trained, 
And if you are looking for an example here for a semantic textual similarity STS, for a duplex query, for a Twitter, for some scientific documentation, for some clustering task that you're interested, hey, I just don't want to see what's similar, but I want to cluster thematic topics. You see here the benchmarks and an average performance. And what's interesting here is the speed, the number of sentences per seconds that you can calculate with these methodologies. And as you see, as of today, let's say I'm interested in clustering. I have a clustering task. I have 10,000 sentences and I want to see, hey, what are the top 10 thematic clusters from those 10,000 sentences? Today, I would probably choose Paraphrase and PNET Base version 2. The speed is not so great, but if I have a non time critical task, the best clustering performance is achieved currently with this model. They, I emphasize here that we have a Paraphrase Mini LM L6 version 2 model. That's a trade-off between performance and speed, and you can see it here. For clustering, it is the top, sorry, that's typical. For the clustering, it's a top four model, and you have quite a lot of sentences that will be calculated per, center, per second, and the average performance with 74 percentage points compared to 76 percentage points on average is not too bad either. So interesting, now, for me, these are two new models, and we can try them out. So whatever is your specific task, have a look at these numbers and choose the model, the pre-trained sentence embedding model that fits best for you. And you say, hey, what's the code for this? No problem, we run the code, this is it. For semantic textual similarity, this means we have a sentence one, we have here three sentences, and another body of sentences, a set of sentences, but not as three sentences. And we say here, hey, I load from my sentence transformer, I load the sentence transformer model, paraphrase mini LM L12 version 2. I encode this model and I get the embeddings from these three sentences and these three sentences. And I simply use PyTorch to encode the cosine similarity between embeddings 1 and embeddings 2. And I provide here the best model. So you see here from the set of sentences one, I have the first sentence, the cat sits outside, and the best sentence from sentence set sentence two is the dog plays in the garden. You see that the score that is provided here shows you the similarity. Great if you want. And sentence three, you have a very good score. But sentence two, I would think with 0, 0.0, <laughs> it is still the best correlation between these two sets of sentences. But it shows you, you have to be careful with the results sometimes, and you have to double check or even triple check what comes out. So you see, simple, you import your sentence transformer, your utility in PyTorch, you import a model from for sentence transformer from Hugging Face, you perform the encoding, and this is it. Now let's say, great, I have some personal training data. And the training data is here, for example, uh, a set of two sentences, sentence A, and here I have sentence B, and the correspondence label says 0.8, whatever it is, and you have another sentence, and if you have 1,000 or 2,000 sentences or whatsoever, and you want to train your model on this particular sentences, on your specific domain-specific knowledge, then you say simply, I have a data loader, I have my train examples, yes, I did do a little bit of shuffle, my batch size is 16, and of course, the loss I calculate here based on a cosine similarity loss model is already all predefined, so more or less you have two lines of code, and then you perform here fit with the model, you have your train data loader, you have your training loss, your cosine similarity, you start with one epoch, you have a warm-up step, and the nice thing is now, if you use version 1.2, that you can now save your model that you calculate. So let's run through this, and you see it is very simple, it is performed right now. And the model here that we get out, and the complete model, you can say is now saved here, and my model save path here, I defined, 
Where's my path? Here. In my working directory, I have a directory output, and then I have a subdirectory training, and over there are all the files and all the data I need for my model. And if now I come back tomorrow and I say, hey, I want to reload my model, I say sentence transformer model save path, I get my model reloaded and I can go on with my model. This is a very nice extension here, a very nice add-on in version 1.2. Yes, they are more complex. You can perform some STS benchmark models, but this is not the topic of the video I want to show you today. Now, something I personally like quite a lot of because I do not have labeled training data, I say, hey, I prefer unsupervised learning. So the system should take the sentences I provide and learn from within the set of sentences I'm providing the system with and no additional training data from my side. Just to be clear, here are currently three or four ways of doing this. Uh, methodology I, write, I personally like is transformer-based denoising autoencoder. What you have here, here, a set of sentences, one, two, three, four. You have a special denoising autoencoder. You have your data loader again. You have your losses designed based on the denoising autoencoder loss. And you do more or less the same thing like I showed you, the fit. Uh, algorithm here is you have your training objectives, you have your epochs, you have your weight decay, your scheduler, you have constant or the warm up or whatsoever, and you can have a look at the progress and you can save the model. And for four sentences, this should be done within seconds. One, two, and three. Yeah, I'm only working on a CPU. So you see here my PyTorch device is a CPU. Then you get a little bit of a warning that don't be things bombs. Because here we have now five iterations, five epochs we're gonna run through. And this is it. This is now our model. And the last line of our code said model.save to the model path output. And here's the A model. And now the model is saved and you got the message. Hey, model performed, save, done. Unsupervised model. Very nice. This is a new model for me, Sim CSE. Simple contrastive learning of sentence embeddings passes the same sentence twice to the sentence embedding decoder. Interesting topic. So your training data now, you have the same sentence twice, sentence here, sentence here. You have the same data loader. You have now a different kind of loss, of course, the multiple negative ranking loss model. You fit the model. You have here your epochs. Again, just one for demonstration purposes that you see even here on my CPU with no CUDA cores on my GPU, so no GPU acceleration. This is done quite fast, but of course, you can take these lines of code, switch it to Colab in Google Cloud, and it will run perfectly. Now, Carlson, this really very interesting model, uh, has a third model with contrastive tension. The code you will find here, we can run through the code if you are interested in it. It's quite fast. What you have here is now you have your word embedding model, distilled word base uncased. You have a batch size, you have a positive negative ratio. The number of epochs is one, the maximum sequence length is 75. We have a model output path. And now we have now a word embedding model that I say, I want to load a transformer model from Hugging Face. And this is the steel bird uncased. Then I apply a pooling layer where I say the pooling layer has uh, per default definition, the mean pooling. And then I have built my own sentence transformer model if the modules are the word embedding model and the pooling model, pooling layer, and this is my sentence transformer model. I have now the train data loader, the train loss, and I again perform a fit algorithms now here, the operation. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time, another 30 seconds, and I will have performed CT. You can check it out for your specific data sets. If one 
methodology is faster than the other one, you have to look at the, at the memory consumption because one of these methodologies is quite memory intensive. But what I want to show you is here in 11 seconds, I can go on. There is an alternative. Uh, this contrast in batch negatives methodology that has been developed. Um, this is a line of code. I show you that it's not working for me here on my CPU. And I have my PyTorch device, I have my training center with my warm up step. And the moment I want to start the iteration, I get a problem because it says here the string object has no attribute text. And if you look here, it is within the sentence transformer uh, code that there is some whatever. Currently, I had a look at it for one minute, but I could not find the error. So if you find a solution, it's not working right out of the box for me. If you find a solution, be kind, leave a comment for me and for the other who view this video so that we also know that this methodology is working. And you get here a uh, some sentence to the performance comparison. Currently, the team from, from sentence embedding is conducting experiments with some unsupervised sentence embedding methodologies, which yields the best results. And currently, they are saying that SimCSE and CT improved are fast to train, while the first methodology uh, takes the longest to train. So if you have a time critical task, the first two seem to be the way to go. And if you have a little bit more time, and maybe I found it quite impressive this method, if you want to achieve a higher accuracy, I received my best results with TSDA. This is it for the first video, just to show you which are the different models that I would recommend, that I would use, that are officially recommended, and to make it a little bit easier for you, if you are a beginner, to step into the field of sentence embedding. You see the code is simple, more or less everything is predefined. You can combine your segments, you can define your own sentence embedding modules based on the more, I think more than 1000 models now for the word embedding are available on Hugging Face for your language, for your specific task. So go on, experience it. It is simple, it is almost trivial, and you learn quite a lot of it. And you can do it on your machine at home. If you only have a CPU, like I have, no problem at all, program runs perfectly fine. And in the next video, I wanna show you a little bit about some further um, optimization. If you go for some um, textual sentence similarity, based on the thematic and what we can do with ranking and deranking and what is the next step in performance update. And the third video of this series will be about speed improvements, how you can speed up your calculation. And there are some nice tricks I found and that are already applied. And I don't want to show you the code to speed up your calculation. Thank you.